So for the last few years, if you wanted a pair of laceless football boots, you pretty much had no other choice other than what Adidas was making, which is fine because I think a lot of what they've made has been pretty good, but you would think given the popularity of these products, other brands would try to do something similar. And we recently got something from Lotto. That's not a serious competitor though. However, New Balance has now entered the laceless football boot game with this boot right here, the New Balance Tequila V3 Pro, which features a laceless design with of course a knitted upper as well as a mid cut collar. A lot of firsts for the New Balance brand and you get all of this for a retail price of $230. Now, regular viewers of this channel know of my overall opinion on laceless boots and some of the general issues that come along with a laceless design. And I guess without spoiling this review, I don't think there's anything about these where New Balance have reinvented the wheel in terms of introducing something that we've never seen before in the realm of laceless football boots. With that said, it's still a pretty solid product and actually a decent alternative to what's currently on offer from the Adidas brand. So if you're a fan of laceless football boots in general, there's something to be excited about with the New Balance Tequila V3 Pro, which we're gonna go over in today's video. So if you wanna learn more about these, including how they fit and feel on feet, please stick around and watch the entire review. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, there's actually a new colorway in white also available as of now. You can click the first link down below or the little pop-up in the corner of the screen. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR for you coupon codes to pick these up below their normal $230 retail price. Also, if you guys do end up enjoying this video, please don't forget to support it with a like. It helps me out a lot. And if you are new here watching for the first time and don't wanna miss out on weekly content on everything football boots, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Before we get into the boots, let's talk extras. Obviously they come in a regular white and red New Balance box. Inside that box, for whatever reason, because we have seen this from New Balance in the past, these do not come with a string bag, which is a bit of a bummer, but you do get a common accessory with laceless football boots in the form of a shoehorn, which you can see is red in color with the New Balance logo there. This is basically just to help you with putting the boots on. I personally don't feel the need to use it. I don't think it actually helps me all that much, but it is nice that they include it. As for the boots themselves, I know the first thing that people are going to comment on is the way that they look, which ultimately doesn't mean anything when it comes to performance, but it is important. People don't want to wear ugly boots. And I'll say that I think they look okay in person. It's not my favorite design by any means. I don't hate the giant N logo that you have here on the lateral side that I know a lot of people don't like. And honestly, this kind of color changing gradient thing they have going on here with this 3D textured knitted material actually looks quite cool. I don't know how much I care for the giant New Balance branding here on the medial side. I know a lot of people don't like that either. The Tequila logo right there and their insistence on writing firm ground directly on the boot, I think that's a little bit unnecessary, but the detail and general quality of the upper is quite nice. Although I will say that the knitted material used for the laceless area as well as the collar doesn't look as premium as some of the stuff on offer from Nike, Adidas, and quite frankly, Puma. It just seems to be lacking in regards to the general aesthetic. Also, the base colorway of this boot is black, but you can see that the knitted area is actually like a dark navy blue. I'm not sure if it's supposed to look black, but it just doesn't match very nicely. And again, it kind of makes the boot look a little bit cheaper than it needs to. And you can see this little piece on the back is also kind of blue versus black, which leads me to believe that this is a blue on purpose, which I don't quite understand. But by far the coolest looking aspect of this boot is the sole plate, which is just the same exact sole plate from the outgoing Tequila V2, but it has this wearable matte black finish on the surface with this kind of gradient color changing effect underneath. So even once that starts to wear away, it's still gonna have a really cool look. It's the exact same design that we saw before, just with a better overall aesthetic. Now, when it comes to tech and overall performance, like I mentioned earlier in the video, New Balance have not reinvented the wheel here. This is pretty much original recipe for a modern laceless football boot in that it's a knitted upper with a laceless design. We've seen this quite a few times already, but the one question that I know a lot of you guys wanna know is which laceless boot from Adidas that is either currently available or that we've seen in the past, does this compare to most closely or is it just something completely different entirely? And 
I don't think it compares to any of their current models all that well, but when I put these on for the first time, immediately they reminded me of the OG A16 Plus Pure Control, which obviously is a boot that came out four years ago, and whether or not you think that is a good or bad thing in terms of a comparison with this boot, I guess is a matter of opinion and depends on your preference when it comes to laceless boots in general. But as a whole, I definitely think that it does hold its own against the laceless boots currently on offer from the Adidas brand, which is nice to see because the worst thing in the world for New Balance, I think, would be for them to put a laceless boot out and it just isn't very good. Fortunately, that's not the case. Now, as far as the upper is concerned, it's a knitted upper with some minor 3D texturing. For those of you guys that saw the preview video that I made on the Tequila V3, I actually read the tech specs directly off of New Balance's website, and those tech specs would suggest that this is the most high-tech football boot in existence ever created period. And the reality of that is that it's just a 3D textured knitted upper. There's really nothing that fancy about it. The areas that are black in color are a little bit thinner, they're softer, they're flexible. You do of course have some minor texturing that isn't super noticeable on the ball. But what is noticeable are these colored sections here that you kind of have running the edges of the laceless system, almost like a striking element. There's no added grip to it. The entire upper is finished in the same kind of pretty standard polyurethane top layer but these areas have some actual knit stitching that is very, very dense. So it's basically rock solid where the rest of the texturing is somewhat hollow and certainly more forgiving. So you kind of have these hard spots in the areas that are colored, which I don't necessarily think adds to the overall feel all that much. It's noticeable when striking the ball just because it is a harder part of the upper and it's in that area of the foot, but as a whole, while I think it looks cool, I could honestly have done without it, and I don't think that it really enhances the overall experience. In terms of touch, it's fairly unextraordinary, and in my opinion, as far as top-end football boots go, it's kind of a subpar knitted upper. Certainly not as good or as premium feeling as the knitted upper from the New Balance Furon V6 Pro, which I think as far as knitted uppers go from this brand, that's just far superior to this. It's also worth noting that it's not a straight knitted upper. Internally, it does have a fairly standard microfiber liner, which does add some stiffness to it. It, to a certain extent, takes away from the sock-like sensation and obviously adds some structure that is necessary to be added in when you go for a laceless design. So just something to be aware of. As far as knitted uppers go, there are definitely ones that provide more of a sock-like sensation, despite how this one might be presented. As far as the laceless system itself is concerned, it looks about as straightforward as we've seen from any laceless football boot in that there is some exposed knitted material running across the middle of the foot, an elasticated material, a very, very standard weave to that, and of course it flows into a mid-cut collar, which is somewhat asymmetrical in that it's lower on the lateral side and a little bit higher on the medial side. Looks okay, better on feet than it does off feet. What is also happening inside is actually a second layer of reinforcement. It's kind of tricky for me to show you this, but if you look inside the boot, there's actually an extra strap that runs basically from edge to edge of the laceless system. It's essentially just an extra layer of knitted material, more of like a heavy duty kind of nylon elasticated strap that just runs from this edge to this edge, basically from here to here within the laceless system, which means that the tension that you get through the midfoot as well as the forefoot is actually above average for a pair of laceless boots. I was really happy with how they wrap your foot in that particular spot. However, that tension does not exist when you go from the top of the midfoot back, which means that the ankle area and heel area really doesn't have any added tension and really provides very little lockdown, which is kind of my main issue with a lot of laceless boots in general. So even though your foot is very secure through the midfoot, and forefoot, although not as secure as something with laces would provide, there just isn't a lot holding your heel in place, which means that heel slippage is fairly common as it would be with a lot of laceless football boots. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's like the downfall of this product and the reason why you shouldn't buy it. If you've worn laceless boots in the past and you don't mind that little bit of slippage or the lack of tension and lockdown in the heel area, this is gonna feel fine to you. You're not gonna have a single problem with that. But if lockdown is particularly important in a pair of football boots for you, these 
laceless boots in general, it's probably not gonna be your thing. As far as the collar is concerned, it's just elasticated knit. There's no structure to it. There is certainly no ankle support on offer from these, although if you choose to believe that it's there, it will be there. Internally, the heel liner is a really soft synthetic suede material, some extra padding in there as well. The insole is fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. And it's pretty standard as far as New Balance top end models go. It features this really nice kind of textured surface, which is their InfiniGrip technology which is just kind of like a light silicone texturing on a mesh surface. Either way, it feels quite good, grips your socks very nicely, and the quality is above average as far as insoles go. And it's made from a single layer of this red, kind of ortholite style foam. Overall, decent insoles. And then as for the sole plate and stud pattern, this is the one thing that hasn't changed coming from the previous generation to Kayla, which I think you could argue it should have changed given how much of a drastic design concept they went with with the knitted laceless upper. Either way, it's still a solid sole plate and stud pattern. I can't be too mad at it. It has a nice flexible sensation to it, a little bit stiffer than the original generation of Tequila, but I think more people actually prefer this style. Visually, I think it's quite good, although that doesn't matter quite as much. And then as far as the firm ground stud pattern is concerned, which yes, this is the firm ground version as specified here under the Tequila logo for some reason. The studs themselves are pretty straightforward in terms of layout, very similar to what you're going to find across the board for the adidas brand and actually kind of reminiscent of the predator 18 and 19 stud pattern which i wasn't particularly a huge fan of i'm not crazy about this stud pattern either but it gets the job done and as a whole if you just don't mind having something a little bit more simple you're not going to have any issues with the way that this fits feels or performs and then finally when it comes to weight again there's nothing really groundbreaking about these in a size 9.5 us you can see that they weigh in at 7.75 ounces, the equivalent of 220 grams, which puts it in the same weight range as most top end models available these days. And right in the middle of the pack of all the laceless boots that are currently available. Now, anyone that's had laceless boots knows that depending on the boots and depending on your foot shape, they can sometimes be difficult to put on. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, they do include that shoehorn. That for me doesn't help all that much. And these ones I think are kind of somewhere in the middle in terms of difficulty of putting them on. Uh, there's plenty of tension through the midfoot, so I like to kind of slide it in sideways as I normally would, kind of the same way I'd put on any football boot, if I'm being honest. I use my thumb to kind of anchor the front part, and then I support the back part with my thumb as well, so I'm not crushing the internal heel counter. Then I kind of just slide it in. Now, there is lots of tension right here, so it doesn't stretch all that much, so you kind of just have to force it in not the easiest thing to do as you can see but once it's on it's not too bad you kind of just adjust the collar around the edges and that's pretty much it on feet the tequila v3 pros feel okay i don't want to say that there's anything amazing about them i don't think that there is a huge standout feature here the knitted upper is solid in terms of feeling decently structured but also soft and flexible there's nothing about the boot that feels overly stiff or that it's going to need a ton of extra break-in time the double layered laceless system i think is the highlight here and that it provides above average amounts of tension through the midfoot and kind of the top area of the forefoot but unfortunately through the heel area like a lot of laceless boots as soon as you bend your foot your heel just moves around a little bit there's nothing locking your heel in place so if lockdown is something that's really important to you in a pair of football boots this is probably not the best option but if you've worn laceless boots in the past these are going to feel very similar in that area of the foot so just something to be aware of the sole plate because it's from the previous generation tequila we know it's good it still feels good no major complaints there as far as width is concerned they are difficult to put on as i showed you guys and if you had really wide feet i definitely think there might be too much tension through the midfoot area so they'd probably be a little bit uncomfortable if not impossible for you to get on so if you have really wide feet probably not a great option for you but they'll probably fit most people otherwise and as far as sizing is concerned i'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 us and the fit and the length is perfect so if you're looking to order some for yourself i would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit so in conclusion do i recommend the new balance tequila v3 pro well i think if you've worn laceless boots in the past and you didn't like them 
don't give these a chance because they're going to feel pretty much the same as what you tried before. And if you didn't like it then, I don't think you're going to like it now. With that said, if you're a fan of laceless football boots and you enjoy wearing them, I think that there's definitely something on offer here, especially considering the lower price tag versus the Adidas top end laceless options. If I had to compare it to another boot, like I said, the A16 Plus Pure Control is probably the closest comparison. Does it beat out any of the current Adidas laceless models? I guess that's a matter of personal preference. I would probably have this over the Nemesis 19 Plus, and for me personally, I probably have these over the X19 Plus as well. If I had to pick my favorite laceless boot on the market right now, by a large margin, it's the Copa, either the 19 Plus or the 20 Plus. That to me is just the gold standard as far as laceless football boots go. But the fact that New Balance have done this for the first time, and it doesn't feel like it's way off what we're currently getting from the Adidas brand is definitely an accomplishment, but again, it kind of reinforces my opinion on laceless football boots in general, is that if this was a boot that simply had a lacing system, I think the overall fit, the overall performance, the lockdown, the comfort, it would just be a better product overall. So what is the laceless aspect of this boot really doing to enhance the experience? In my opinion, not very much. I don't wanna say that it's boring because I think it's cool to see brands do things that they've never done before, but this to me feels like a laceless boot that exists for the sake of having a laceless boot. Anyways guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes to pick these up below their normal retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already and don't wanna miss out on weekly videos on everything football boots, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.